Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the invocation given by the three core chaplain, Chaplain Robert Whitlock. Please bow with me in prayer. Lord, we all know there will be days in our lives that bring us to our knees in frustration and utter disbelief. Days that challenge what we believe to be true, what we thought was secure, what we believe to be unassailable. Days that caused our hearts to break and our determination to waver. November the 5th, 2009 was such a day. But Lord, today is not that kind of day. Today is a day that we come together standing tall, confident in our beliefs, knowing that we stand on solid ground even when tragedy engulfs us and our tears flow freely. Today is a day that looking back, we acknowledge our pain, confusion, and frustration, but more importantly, we recognize your presence and care in our lives both then and each day since. So today, we honor those touched by November the 5th. We ask for your peace, grace, and healing to overwhelm their loss. We ask for your help as a community to remember, to cherish, and to honor our own. And as always, we ask for your wisdom and strength to live today and every day according to your will. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Lieutenant General Sean McFarland, Commanding General, Three Corps in Fort Hood, and the Three Corps in Fort Hood Command Sergeant Major, Command Sergeant Major Alonzo J. Smith, thank you for joining us today as we recognize these great Americans for their sacrifice in the defense of freedom. We are honored and humbled to be in the presence of all of these soldiers and civilians. Thank you for what you do for all of us. At this time, we would like to pay special recognition to the Governor of Texas, the Honorable Greg Abbott, U.S. Senator, the Honorable John Cornyn, U.S. Senator, the Honorable Ted Cruz and Mrs. Cruz, U.S. Representatives, the Honorable John Carter and Mrs. Carter, the Honorable Louis Gohmert, the Honorable Michael McCall, the Honorable Phil Rowe, the Honorable Bill Flores, the Honorable Roger Williams and Mrs. Williams. The Secretary of the Army, the Honorable John McHugh. The Sergeant Major of the Army, Command Sergeant Major Daniel A. Daly and Mrs. Daly. General Mark Milley, Commanding General, United States Army Forces Command. Command Sergeant Major Scott Schroeder, Command Sergeant Major, United States Army Forces Command. And all other General Officers, Command Sergeants Major, good neighbors, distinguished guests, and friends of Fort Hood in attendance today. The music for today's ceremony is provided by the 1st Cavalry Division Band, led by Major Derek Shaw. The salute battery for today's ceremony is provided by Bravo Battery 182 Field Artillery, led by Lieutenant Carl McKeith and Sergeant First Class Meyer Sherman. Today's honor guard is provided by the Phantom Command, led by Sergeant First Class Sean Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the entrance of the official party and remain standing for honors to the host and honors to the nation. Today's official party consists of Lieutenant General Sean McFarland and Command Sergeant Major Alonzo J. Smith.
Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, Lieutenant General Sean McFarland. Good morning. Governor Abbott, Senators Cornyn and Cruz, Congressmen Carter, Gomert, McCall, Rowe, Flores, and Williams. The Honorable John McHugh, our Secretary of the Army, General Milley, General Retired and Mrs. Cohn, General Retired Mrs. Shoemaker, Lieutenant General Talley, Sergeant Major of the Army Daly, Command Sergeant Major Retired Coleman. Fellow General Officers, good neighbors, and other distinguished guests, thank you all for coming this morning to attend this ceremony. I want to thank those of you who traveled long distances to be here today. I particularly want to thank the wounded warriors and Gold Star family members for whom this ceremony is certain to bring back some painful memories. It is our sincere hope that today we will in some small way help to heal the wounds that you have suffered. Of our honorees, it can be truly said that all gave some and that some gave all on that terrible day. The recipients hail from 21 different states and different units from across Fort Hood and the country. Unselfishly, they left their fathers and their mothers. They left behind their sisters and their brothers. Leaving their beloved children and wives, they put on hold their dreams. Many of those dreams were shattered in the early afternoon of November 5, 2009, when a lone gunman stepped into a busy soldier readiness processing center about two miles from where we are today. He opened fire at the crowd with a semi-automatic pistol and killed 12 soldiers and one civilian and injured 31 others, both inside and outside of the building. Of those killed, seven were active duty, five were reservists, and one was a civilian contractor. Today, we award the Purple Heart and Defense of Freedom Medals to 27 wounded in action and the families and loved ones of 11 killed in action. Other recipients of the Purple Heart and Defense of Freedom Medals and their families who are not joining us today will be honored in local ceremonies throughout the nation. And although they are not with us today, we honor them as well. The events of November 5th also affected many in the Fort Hood and surrounding communities. Many had never met before the event, but since then, hundreds of lives have been woven together by this single day of valor and loss. While no words can resurrect those we lost or completely erase the scars, today's ceremony is an opportunity to provide a sense of closure to those who were injured or who lost a loved one. We honor the memories of the 13 souls laid to eternal rest and pay tribute to their sacrifice. We also remember the acts of courage and selflessness of soldiers and civilians, which prevented an even greater calamity from occurring that day. When shots rang out on Fort Hood, our soldiers and first responders ran toward the sound of gunfire and performed exactly as they were taught to do. Law enforcement officers issued commands and worked together as a team to draw fire away from trapped soldiers and take down the shooter. Medics provided immediate life-saving treatment to, for those injured. Soldiers were adapted using plastic tables as makeshift stretchers and loading the casualties into the beds of F-150 pickup trucks to evacuate the wounded to medical facilities. I could not be more proud of how our soldiers and first responders reacted that day. They demonstrated grace under pressure in the face of peril their composure and fearlessness prevailed. It was exactly what we would expect of America's finest. Their bravery has been matched only by their resilience, the spirit of which is seen throughout the Army. The 20th Engineer Battalion from Fort Hood lost four soldiers and suffered 11 wounded during the shooting. The 467th Medical Detachment, an Army Reserve unit based in Madison, Wisconsin, lost three soldiers and had four wounded. Despite these losses, both units deployed to Afghanistan within months. Ten of the 30 surviving soldiers from that day continue to serve on active duty or in the National Guard or Reserve. 
their commitment to fulfill their duty, and their unwavering dedication to the mission is a testament to the strength and grit of the American soldier. The Fort Hood community will never forget those we lost. But as we commemorate them, let us also pay homage to their memories through our continued service. We also recognize the continued cooperation and support of Fort Hood's surrounding community. I'm glad to see so many faces from our Central Texas family with us here today. Your overwhelming outpouring of aid and generosity, seen in gestures, great and small, helped Fort Hood overcome the tragedy of that day. On the 5th of November, teachers and school counselors from the local schools stayed at school into the dark hours of the night, caring for the children of the soldiers and civilians who were restricted from leaving Fort Hood when the post was locked down. Neighboring hospitals provided medical attention to our soldiers when our facilities were overwhelmed. The Texas Rangers and the FBI provided law enforcement and investigative support. Counselors and medical health professionals from around the region offered their assistance. The steady and unwavering support from our local community in the months and years since have helped make Fort Hood a stronger and more united community. Although I stand before you now, I was not the commander here on that fateful day. That responsibility fell to a great leader who reacted promptly and comprehensively, the former commander of the United States Army Training and Doctrine Command and the commanding general of the 3rd Corps in Fort Hood, General Bob Cohn. When tragedy struck Fort Hood, General Cohn was less than two months into command. And then, less than two months later, General Cohn led 3rd Corps to, on a 12-month deployment to Iraq. But in his brief time here, his swift actions and calm leadership marked the first steps in beginning our long road to recovery, which continues today. Sir, thank you not only for coming here today to speak to us, but also for spearheading Fort Hood and this community's response to the shooting and for your vision, which paved the way for the military to reassess how we handle mass casualty events. Everybody, please join me in welcoming General Retired Bob Cohn. Ladies and gentlemen, General Retired Robert W. Cohn. Distinguished guests, Jill and I are honored to be back in Central Texas to commemorate this important event. It is great to see so many of our friends in attendance today as we properly recognize the service and sacrifice of these superb American patriots and their families. A great deal has happened since the afternoon of November 5, 2009. That is a date and a series of events that changed so many lives forever. The Fort Hood shooting touched the lives of literally thousands of people who were involved or influenced in some way. But no one was more affected than those we honor today with the presentation of the Purple Heart and Defense of Freedom Medal. I would be remiss if I did not reflect on the incident for a few short moments. As the Corps Commander at the time, I think what struck me most was the tremendous sense of purpose and resilience of the soldiers, civilians, and first responders at the scene of the incident. At the moment of greatest need, these professionals were at their very best, using their combat training to respond to the crisis, to treat and evacuate the wounded, and care for each other. Simply stated, this is what our Army is all about. Equally impressive was the reaction of this great Fort Hood and Central Texas community. Suffice it to say, anything that we needed, we got in very short order. The outpouring of support for everything from blood transfusions to local hospitality for families to financial contributions was simply amazing. In so many ways, 
the community's response truly represents the remarkable bond between this installation and this community. Another group of heroes has emerged in the years since the shooting tragedy. These are the people who have stepped up to continue to support those wounded and the families of those killed as they negotiate the process of healing. In my view, none have been more influential than Senator John Kernan and Representative John Carter. Both were present in the immediate aftermath of the shooting and have continued to lead the way in ensuring the military takes proper care of the dead, the wounded, and their families. I should point out that they, along with Senator Ted Cruz and Congressman Roger Williams, were instrumental in sponsoring legislation that makes this award of the Purple Heart and Defense of Freedom Medal possible today. I would like to personally thank you for your persistence in making sure that our government has done the right thing by these great patriots. I would also like to recognize the leadership of Army Secretary John McHugh. Throughout the entire life cycle of this incident, he was there for us in the immediate aftermath of the shooting and ultimately made the call in interpreting the legislation making today possible. There are two others I would like to thank who have been instrumental in support of the wounded and their families. First, Ms. Mary Jo Speaker, who is a victim advocate specialist with the Department of Justice who coordinated services in support of our great warriors and their families. <laughs> Second, Fort Hood's own Ron Taylor. As the former president of the Central Texas Fort Hood AUSA chapter, Ron took on the Herculean task of coordinating and distributing funds raised in support of the wounded and their families. <clears throat> to all who have done so much for our soldiers, civilians, and families, thank you for all that you have done in support of this cause and your persistence in completing this recognition today, which is so essential to achieving a greater sense of closure to this incident. As my primary message today, I'd like to offer a little bit of, a little bit of advice about being a survivor, which is something that I've come to know quite a bit about through my health struggles the last three and a half years. I would offer the words of Dr. Steve Maraboli from his book, Unapologetically You, Reflections on Life and the Human Experience. I think his words capture the essence of what it means to be a survivor. You are not a victim. No matter what you have been through, you're still here. You may have been challenged, hurt, betrayed, beaten, and discouraged, but nothing has defeated you. You are still here. You have been delayed, but not denied. You are not a victim. You are a victor. You have a history of victory. For the recipients of today's awards, both living and deceased, today is about victory. Today is about fully documenting and acknowledging your sacrifice for this great nation. But for the living, it's also about more than that. It's about change and adaptation to the consequences of a horrible, horrible act. Over time, I have monitored many of you as you have struggled, adapted, triumphed, or stumbled. Well, there has been much pain there has been great progress. That is the essence of being a survivor. That is the essence of being a victor over a terrible incident like this. For many of you, many challenges will continue to lie ahead. But I am confident that you will meet those challenges in the spirit of victory. Victory over the terrible acts perpetrated against you on November 5, 2009. 
As Ernest Hemingway once said, the world breaks everyone, and afterward, some are strong at the broken places. In so many ways, that is what survivorship is really all about. To Fort Hood and General McFarland, thank you so much for inviting me here today. It has truly been my honor to be back among the soldiers of the Phantom Corps. May God bless all of you, all of the soldiers at Fort Hood, the United States Army, and the United States of America. Oh. The Purple Heart is the oldest military decoration and is the first American award made available to the common soldier. It was initially created as the badge of military merit by one of the nation's most famed and best loved heroes, General George Washington. The actual order included the phrase, let it be known that he who wears the military order of the Purple Heart has given of his blood in the defense of his homeland and shall be forever revered by his fellow countrymen. The Secretary of Defense Medal for the Defense of Freedom was established to acknowledge civilian employees of the Department of Defense who are killed or wounded in the line of duty. The medal symbolizes the extraordinary fidelity and essential service of the department's civilian workforce who are an integral part of the Department of Defense and who contribute to the preservation of national security. To all who shall see these presents greeting, this is to certify that the President of the United States of America has awarded the Purple Heart established by General George Washington at Newburgh, New York, August 7, 1782, to the following soldiers for wounds received in action on 5 November 2009 at Fort Hood, Texas, given under my hand in the city of Washington this sixth day of February 2015, signed Secretary of the Army, John M. McHugh, Lieutenant Colonel Randy Royer, Captain Dorothy Karskaden. Captain Brandy Mason.
Chief Warrant Officer 3, Christopher Royal. Staff Sergeant Michael Davis. Staff Sergeant Alvin Howard. Staff Sergeant Eric Jackson. Staff Sergeant Sean Manning. Sergeant First Class Paul Martin. Sergeant First Class Joy Clark. Sergeant First Class Tuan Wen. Sergeant First Class Miguel Valdivia. Staff Sergeant Patrick Ziegler. Sergeant Nathan Hewitt. Sergeant Kira Torkelson. Specialist Logan Burnett. Specialist Dana Roscoe. Sergeant Grant Moxon.
specialist, John Pagel. Specialist, James Armstrong. Specialist Mick Engel. Private First Class Jonathan Sims. PV2 Joseph Foster. Specialist Naji Hall. Private Amber Gadlin. The Secretary of Defense Medal for Defense of Freedom is presented to Ms. Kimberly Munley in honor of her heroism and selfless service beyond the call of duty on behalf of a grateful nation. Signed, Secretary of the Army, John M. McHugh. The Purple Heart is being posthumously awarded to the following soldier's family members. Command Sergeant Major Smith will also present each family member with the Gold Star pin. Lieutenant Colonel Juanita Warman. The award will be presented to her husband, Mr. Philip Warman. Major Labardo Caraveo. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Angela G. Rivera. Captain John Gaffney. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Christine Gaffney. Staff Sergeant Justin DeCrow. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Mary Kay DeCrow. Also to his mother, Mrs. Rhonda Thompson. And his father, Mr. Daniel DeCrow.
Staff Sergeant Amy Kruger. The award will be presented to her mother, Mrs. Gerilyn M. Kruger. And to her father, Mr. Mark Kruger. And Mr. David Dio. Specialist Frederick Green. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Christy M. Green. And to his father, Mr. John Green. Specialist Jason Hunt. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Jennifer Hunt. And to his father, Mr. Gary Hunt. Private First Class Aaron Namelka. The award will be presented to his mother, Mrs. Tina Namelka. Mr. Michael Namelka was not able to join us this morning. His son, Andrew Namelka, will receive the award on his behalf. Private First Class Michael Pearson. The award will be presented to his father, Mr. Jeffrey Pearson. And to his mother, Mrs. Cheryl Pearson. Private First Class Francesca Velez. The award will be presented to her mother, Mrs. Eileen Rodriguez. And to her father, Mr. Juan Velez. The Defense of Freedom Medal is being posthumously awarded to Mr. Michael Cahill. The award will be presented to his wife, Mrs. Jolene M. Cahill. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing as we render honors to the fallen with three rifle volleys, the playing of taps, and remain standing for the retiring of the colors. <laughs> 